I have to work really, 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 really late tonight through the night, and so I'm drinking coffee at 9.30 p.m. Being a network engineer is fun. Anyway, we are back today with more Kurzgesagt, and today we're going to be reacting to What Do Alien Civilizations Look Like? The Kardashev Scale. I had referenced this in a previous video, the Stellar Engine one, I believe. I made a reference to what type of civilization you would have to be in order to do what they were talking about in that video, and I don't know if I referenced that properly, so we're going to watch this and learn. The observable universe is a big place that's been around for more than 30 billion years. Up to 2 trillion galaxies made up of something like 20,000 billion billion stars surround our home galaxy. More than you can possibly comprehend. Tell me that there's not life out there somewhere other than us. There has to be. When we look at these numbers, it's hard to imagine that there is nobody else out there. Yep. It would change our perception of ourselves forever if we found others. Just knowing that this vast place is... I really hope that happens in my lifetime. Outwards, I think that would be so cool to have confirmation that life exists. But, but on top of that, life in our solar is, system, because that's problems. really the only place and we can... What are we actually looking that's really for? the only place that we can confirm with our current technologies. Unless it comes to us. In a universe that big and old, we have to assume that civilizations start millions of years apart from each other and develop in different directions and speeds. So, not only Makes are we sense. looking over distances of dozens to hundreds of thousands of light years, we're looking for a civilization ranging from cavemen to super advanced. Mm -hmm. So, we need a conceptual framework to enable us to think better thoughts that make us able to search better. Are there universal rules that intelligent species follow? <laughs> Currently, our civilization sample size is only one, so yeah. we may make incorrect We don't have a bunch to base it off of. Still, a sample size of one thing. is not a proper we sample know size. We humans started out with nothing but minds and hands that could build tools. We know that humans are curious, competitive, greedy for resources, and expansionist. And you would expect that to be true. The more had, the more successful they were in the civilization building game. Being one with nature is nice, but it's not the path to irrigation systems or gunpowder or cities. And those, those assumptions, they're based on life as we know it. But in my opinion, those are very safe assumptions because chances are if life develops somewhere else, it's also going to, through evolution, split and develop into multiple species. Now, there may only be one intelligent species, you know, on a planet, but there's going to be other non-intelligent species too. And especially in the early stages of a species evolution, it has to fight for resources and compete with these other species. So it's probably safe to assume that those characteristics that they just mentioned about humans are probably true for other intelligent life, because they've probably had to go through similar competition, just like we humans did. So it's reasonable to assume that aliens able to take over their home planet also have these qualities. Yep. And if aliens have to follow the same laws of physics, then there is a measurable metric for progress, energy use. Okay, I buy that. Progress can be measured very precisely by how much energy we extracted from our environment mm -hmm. and how we made it usable to do things. We started with muscles until we learned <laughs> to control fire. Then we made machines that used kinetic energy from water and wind. Yep. As our machines got better and our knowledge of materials expanded, we began to harness Pretty good the way to measure. energy from dead plants we dug up from the ground. As our energy consumption grew exponentially, so did the abilities of our civilization. Between 1800 and 2015... I had read or watched somewhere, I don't remember which, that the gas that your car uses, so the oil that the gas is made from, in terms of algae, because not all of it, you know, some of it's plants, some of it's algae, etc., etc. The algae needed to drive a single mile in your car is over a trillion algae. <laughs> so, over a trillion algae died way back when and tur slowly turned into oil for you to drive that mile. It's crazy mind blowing. Population size had increased sevenfold while humanity was consuming 25 times more energy. 
It's likely that this process will continue into the mm -hmm. far future. Based on these facts, scientist Nikolai Kardashev developed a method of categorizing civilizations from cave dwellers to gods ruling over galaxies. Yeah. The Kardashev scale. Yeah, that's the, the thing is ranking civilizations by their energy use. If if uh, you were to take a human from even a hundred years ago and show them what's happening today, we would be gods in their eyes. Now do that a thousand years ago, you know. They couldn't even fathom the stuff that we do. So it makes sense that, you know, a thousand years from now, humanity is doing things that wouldn't even make sense to us if we make it that far. These wow. levels differ by orders of magnitude. It's like comparing an ant colony to a human metropolitan area. That's insane. To ants, we are so complex and powerful, we might as well be gods. So to make the scale more useful, we need subcategories. On the lower end of the spectrum, there are type 0 to type 1 What are we right now, Anything today? From hunter-gatherers to something we could achieve in the next few hundred years. These might actually be abundant in the Milky Way. But a civilization that is not actively transmitting radio... That's a huge assumption, though. ...might be as close as our nearest stellar neighbor, the Alpha Centauri system, and we would have no way of realizing they exist. Mm -hmm. But even if they transmitted radio signals like we do, it might not be very helpful. On an interstellar scale, humanity is practically invisible. Our signals may extend over an impressive 200 light years, but this is only a tiny fraction of the Milky Way. And even Jeez. if someone were listening, after a few light years, our signals decay into noise, impossible to identify as the source of an intelligent species. Mm. Today, yep. humanity ranks at about level 0 0.75. Hey, we're three quarters of the way there. We've created huge structures, mined and stripped mountains, removed rainforests and drained swamps. We've created rivers and lakes and changed the composition and temperature of the atmosphere. Yeah. If progress continues and we don't make Earth uninhabitable we will become <laughs> a full type one that's kind of the big if <laughs> the next few hundred years any civilization that becomes a type one is bound to look outside because it's likely that it's still curious competitive greedy and expansionist that all makes sense the next reasonable step towards transitioning to type two is trying to alter and mine other planets and bodies mm -hmm. this might start with outposts in space transition to infrastructure and industries near the home planet move on to colonies and end with terraforming other planets by changing their atmosphere their rotation or position as a civilization expands and uses more and more stuff and space, its energy consumption scales with them. So at some point, they may embark on the largest project a lower type two civilization can take on, harnessing the energy of their star by building a Dyson Swarm. Type two. Darn it, I was wrong. I said that was a type one in that video. I do think that this all makes sense though. Of course, as we get the capability to do so, we're going to leave Earth. For resources we're going to get resources from elsewhere we're going to populate elsewhere even though we might not be consciously thinking about it all the time we do fight for survival not only for the individual but as a species and being on multiple planets greatly increases our survivability as a species and i think that we're kind of right now at that maybe just a little bit under where we know that there's other resources out there. We could, I feel, with our current technology, actually inhabit somewhere else. I mean, we've been on the space station for how long? Now, the space station, of course, is uh, refueled and restocked by supplies from Earth. But we have the technology to become self-sufficient on a place like Mars. And if we're, if we're not quite there, we're very close. I know that's something that we've been looking into for a very, very long time. In addition to the technology, there's also the economic feasibility of doing so. So right now we know that there's asteroids and other planets that have loads and loads and loads of resources that are ripe for the taking, but it's not economically feasible to get there, get the resources, and then get them back to Earth. Once we do something like that for the first time, or establish an outpost for the first time, and our technology in AI and automation gets better, we can start making more things in space. So instead of actually hauling raw resources back to Earth, we can actually 
bring more refined goods back. And that makes it more economically feasible. On top of the fact that the more and more and more we do something, the cheaper it's going to get as we continue to do it. Once this megastructure is finished, energy has become practically unlimited for molding the home system however they see fit. If they are still curious, competitive, greedy and expansionist, and now have complete control over their home system, the stellar infrastructure in place and the energy output of a star, the next frontier moves to other stars light years away. For a Type II civilization, the distance to other stars might feel like the distance between Earth and Pluto does to us today. Technically, hey, there's the Stellar Engine. Immense investments in terms of time, Someone explained that to me in the comments, by the way, and it makes a lot more sense now. Type three. This step is so far beyond us that it becomes hard to imagine what exactly these challenges will look like and how they'll be solved. Will they be able to find a solution to the vast distances and travel times of hundreds or thousands of years? Will they be able to communicate and keep a shared culture and biology between colonies light years apart? Or will they split into separate Type II civilizations? Maybe even different species? Are there deadly challenges between the stars? This animation is the coolest animation ever. The harder it becomes to fathom what it might actually look like. They might discover new physics, may understand and control dark matter and energy, or be able to travel faster than light. We might be unable to grasp their motives, technology, and actions. Humans are the ants, trying to understand the galactic metropolitan area. It's like trying to explain physics to your dog, right? Doesn't matter if you have the smartest dog in the world, and no matter how hard you try, it will never understand calculus. I think I said physics the first time, but whatever. When you think about in humanity's history, how there's been a small number of people that have had enormous impacts on our scientific understanding. Think like Einstein, Stephen Hawking, minds of that magnitude and how much they've contributed towards our understanding. How many more of them will there be? How many more geniuses are out there that are children today at the school that have just great destinies ahead of them to become the next Einstein? How many of them are yet to be born? Type 2 civilization might already consider humanity too primitive to even talk to. Mm -hmm. A Type 3 civilization might feel about as like we feel about the bacteria living on the anthill. Maybe they wouldn't even consider us conscious or our survival relevant. Mm -hmm. We could only pray that they're nice gods. Yeah, that's a the scary thought, right? Some scientists suggest there might be Type 4 and Type 5 civilizations whose influence stretches over galaxy clusters or superclusters, structures comprising thousands of galaxies and trillions of stars. Wow. Ultimately, there might be a Type Omega civilization, able to manipulate the entire universe and possibly others. Type Is that Omega what we consider God? Might be the actual creators of our universe for reasons beyond our comprehension. Maybe they were just bored. Maybe we're some kid's school project sitting on a bookshelf and they got a D. <laughs> as flawed as this classification may be, this thought experiment is already telling us interesting things. Mm -hmm. If our ideas about the nature of species that form interstellar civilizations is sort of correct, then we can be pretty sure that there are no civilizations of Type 3 and beyond near the Milky Way. Their influence yep. would in all likelihood be so all-encompassing and their technology so far above... We wouldn't be able to miss them. them, yeah. The galaxy should flash with their activity in thousands of star systems. We should be able to see or detect their artifacts or movements between different parts of their empire. Even if a Type 3 civilization did exist in the past and died a mysterious death, we should be able to detect some of the remnants of their empire. But when scientists looked, they didn't find remnants of harvested stars, decaying yep. megastructures, or scars of great interstellar wars. So they're very likely not out there and never were. Mm -hmm. In a sense, this is very sad, but also very reassuring. We get to be the pioneers. And others similar to like us. I was saying, it's so exciting, right? So the most promising civilizations to look for may be somewhere in the spectrum from type 1.5 to type 2.5. And we're a point seven. 5 ish to understand them and their motives 
They may have finished their first megastructures, and they might be in the process of moving stuff between stars and transmitting enormous amounts of information into space mm -hmm. by accident or on purpose. They would probably also look to the stars and look for others. Yeah. Then again, maybe we've got it all wrong. Maybe progress to type 2 does not mean expanding outwards and humanity is still too immature to imagine otherwise. That's also a real, For real... Now, all we really know <laughs> is that we haven't seen wow, can't talk yet. today. That's also a very Until real possibility. Looking. Until we finally find friendly super aliens and can ask them to explain the rules of the universe to us, most of us have to make do with learning stuff ourselves. Darn it, I don't want to learn things myself. Just kidding, I love learning. This was a great video. I, I I know I say this about every Curtis Gazad video that we watch, but I mean, they're all great. But this one especially, it just really gets your mind going and it really gets you hopeful when you start thinking of where we are as a species. You know, it's really easy to get depressed and we just watched a video about our destructive capabilities and how scary that can be. I learned today that we're a 0.75 on the Kardashev scale. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. As always, if you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. Hit subscribe if you want to see more content. And be sure to support the original creator, Kurz Gazag. They're amazing and they deserve it. I hope you have such a wonderful day.